Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, today is my 40th birthday, and a lot of you guys saw on Instagram, you kind of saw my birthday meal, the <laughs> enormous steak that Brittany bought for me. Uh, we shared that, by the way, I didn't eat that whole thing. Even though my stomach just pushed out pretty far from eating that much food, it was delicious, probably be the last uh, high-fat meal I get for a while, though. Back to high fiber, uh, high carbs. So, uh, I feel like, having reached 40, I should hopefully, hopefully be a little wiser, because they say that you learn from your mistakes, and I've had 40 years to make a lot of mistakes to learn from, and a lot of those include in my fitness journey. Um, so, sh let me share with you guys some of the things uh, that I feel are some of the most important lessons I've learned outside of, you know, just the study of uh, studies in the academic aspect, but just some real life observations, particularly for those of you moving forward in age, uh, once you get past your 20s. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about it. All right, number one, um, one of the most important things I've learned about training is that you should never stop doing it. You can't stop doing it. I was advised by my medical doctors at one time to quit lifting. In fact, I was told to quit lifting, and I did, and my medical issues degenerated, uh, and it resulted in me spending basically 10 months in bed sick, uh, because at that point, not only did my physical health degenerate further, but then my mental health degenerated, because I had been lifting for a decade. It had been a big part of my life for over an entire decade, uh, being strong, being muscular, were part of my identity. Training was a form of stress relief for me. It was a form of therapy and quitting doing it um, really attacked my personal identity and my mental health deteriorated along with my physical further at that point. Uh, best advice I can give you, when a doctor tells you to quit lifting for a medical reason, get a second opinion. All right, because it is going to harm your health. If you're a serious lifter, it's not only gonna harm your health, it's going to harm you mentally when you quit. So they damn well better be sure that you need to stop. Uh, number two, having too much ego, both when you train and when you set goals. Ego lifting, training for your ego instead of taking the time to properly program strength gains. Get you hurt, it can set you back. It's fine to set lofty goals. It's fine to set goals that you're going to have to work really, really hard for. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it will make you a better person in many ways. However, don't be stupid with the setting of those goals. They need to be goals that are actually reasonably obtainable, meaning there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm going to set a goal that looks like it's possible to do in the next five years if I'm willing to really be bust my ass, train hard, and train smart. All right, I can reach this goal in five years. Uh, it, it can be done. It has been done. It's within the realm of possibility. But don't set a goal that's biologically impossible and expect it to work. All that's going to do is lead to disappointment and it's going to get you hurt. Uh, set your ego to the side when setting goals. Set goals that, again, are obtainable but might require you to do an enormous amount of consistent hard work for many years. And there's nothing wrong with that, but they need to be realistic. Set your ego to the side when you're lifting. You're not in the gym to demonstrate strength. In fact, if you don't compete in anything, there's probably no reason for you to ever demonstrate absolute strength. You're in the gym to build strength, to build muscle, to improve your fitness. If you're in there to milk your own ego, guess what? You're going to get hurt. And when you get hurt, you're going to get set back. And when you get set back, that's going to be a bigger blow to your ego. That's going to hurt the amount of muscle that you gain, the amount of strength that you gain, everything else if you get hurt too many times. We can all get hurt once usually and get away with it. It's a learning experience. It was for me. I had a major training injury in my late 20s. You know what I learned from it? I learned to listen to my body. I learned to know when to deload. I learned to accept that you can work hard and smart at the same time, but when you work so hard that you stop working smart, because that's what I did, I was doing two a days, deadlifting too heavy at too high of a frequency until something finally snapped. But you know what? I had all the warning signs there for weeks and I ignored them. You know why? Because I was fucking indestructible. I could outwork. We know someone else like that. 
I could outwork that, that I wasn't a normal person with normal limitations. Well, guess what? Um, your ego won't stop connective tissue from snapping off the bone. Leave your ego at the door when you're in the gym training. Leave your ego outside when you write your own training programming and assess it. And back to the other point about training hard. You can train hard, but train smart with it. In fact, that's probably the best combination. And training smart means knowing when to back off. You guys watched me the other day, some of my recent deadlift clips. Uh, they're up on Instagram also. I lift for a guy my age. I lift pretty heavy. I lift pretty heavy for a fair number of reps. I do it beltless. I do it strapless. I train in t-shirts and a short and work boots. But I know when to quit, just like this week. I had a couple of really good deadlift sessions. I started seeing signs of overreaching. My lower back is starting to cramp. My lower back cramps when I load and unload plates now. I know that it's time to deload a little bit. I know that my body is saying, you need to back off. And uh, you're deadlifting too frequently, too heavy. It's great, but uh, you're overreaching time to back down, deload. Let everything heal, adapt. You have to learn to listen to your body. You have to learn to listen to your connective tissue. Your body will give you the warning signs that you are pushing too hard. And pushing too hard varies from person to person. We might be pushing too hard for one person's work capacity, recovery, and connective tissue that will injure you. Someone else will thrive in that environment for two years straight and go even harder. The same workload that will injure you, you need to remember that, will injure one person and snap tendons off the bone on that person, cause tendonitis, inflammation, and things that are gonna hurt them for the rest of their lives, there's another person out there who can do that same workload in 10 or 20% more without experiencing anything negative and continue to thrive and progress. There are a lot of individual factors of recovery with uh, building work capacity. You have to learn your limits and you have to learn to, you know, occasionally, depending upon if you wanna be your best, sometimes you have to ride the edge of those limits. But you need to know those limits and you need to know when you're pushing too far and when you start to push too far you have to be wise enough and smart enough to back it down a notch and let your body recover your body is not indestructible the human body is an amazing amazing machine very possibly the most amazing machine any of us have ever seen on earth i think it is but it has limits it can adapt to so many things and change and improve itself and put under stressors of all types. And it adapts and overcomes all sorts of obstacles, whether they are physical or mental. But it has its limits, it has its breaking point. Um, and sometimes we have to find the breaking point of ours, but when you find it the first time, you need to learn it and let that be a lesson to you. Again, you leave your ego at the door. Uh, cardio someone noted the other day that uh, my breathing has improved and they're right people need to understand the role of cardio as we get older now i personally have a deviated septum you guys can tell from my sniffle my nose sometimes i suffer from a lot of inner ear problems on, in addition to all of it it's all connected together so for me i tend to sound like i'm breathing deeper than other people when i'm not at my peak cardiovascular condition it's exacerbated uh, so as of lately, I don't ever do less than an hour of less cardio a day. Uh, some days I do a lot more. But you know what? At the end of the day, you need to understand the role of cardio uh, in your overall health and your overall recovery. That's the important thing that people need to understand that cannot be stressed enough as you get older. You need to do cardio for your health. You need to do cardio for your heart. But also you need to do cardio for your recovery. Everyone tries to think of cardio as a fat loss tool. It really isn't. If you're thinking of cardio as a fat loss tool, you have the wrong mindset because you know what? For some people, uh, cardio's caloric burn is really going to cause a problem, but they need to learn to eat more. Uh, but there's no reason for you to cut your cardio back when you're bulking. Even if you're bulking and gaining body fat, you need to be doing enough cardio to facilitate improved recovery, uh, improved work capacity, uh, improve capillarization to clear waste products from your muscles because when you are cardiovascularly fit you recover better from training better recovery is everything 
if you are lifting. It is literally the single most important factor. I used to laugh at that. I used to think that was bullshit. As I continued to get older and I watched myself and I watched other people, the only people who don't stress recovery are people who take enough drugs to not have to worry about their recovery for the workload they do. And sometimes the amount of drugs these guys take, I'm sorry guys, you're not gonna be able to take this in your 30s or 40s. Even some of you guys now, um, you're like, well, I can, I can get away with that many drugs. Yeah, you can right now. Keep pushing it though, bud. Try doing it for 20 years and see how that, that uh, turns out for you. It's not gonna go well. Recovery is everything, and being cardiovascularly fit, it's not about your body composition, and that's where guys mess up way too much. They want to do a bunch of cardio when they want to cut, instead of saying, I need the benefits of cardio even more when I'm bulking. They come in even more handy there. All they do when I'm cutting is let me eat a, a little more. But when you're bulking, you're trying to gain muscle, you're trying to gain strength, Cardio will improve your recovery. That faster recovery will let your progress be better. And you know what? It's also going to make you less sore. It's going to make you less sore as a result of your training because you recover faster and you clear waste products faster. Cardiovascular conditioning is everything, even to the weightlifter, particularly as you get older. When you start lifting these heavy loads, you put certain strains on your heart, you need your heart to be in good shape. It's important. You can't neglect it. Lastly, the importance of full range of motion training and balance in your body. Um, too many young guys do too many partial movements. They develop unnecessary tightness. They develop muscle weaknesses. Uh, they subject themselves to potential injuries with all of these partial movements. Train everything that you can through a full range of motion. Granted, some exercises are going to limit that. You know what? That's okay. It's In many cases, the actual injury is from doing the exercise itself in a partial and leaving the room with a moderately heavy weight for the weight to accidentally dip lower than your normal strength curve you've been training it through. Meaning, you can only deadlift. It can't go deeper than the floor. So since it can't go deeper than the floor, you're not really at risk of injury by stopping at the floor if you're capable of going lower. But you know what? Deficit deadlifts still have some interesting benefits. They're worth considering, even in that environment. But yeah, partial movements. Partial movements can lead to muscle imbalances, joint weaknesses, and they can lead to weaknesses that can get you hurt in the weight room. Uh, muscle balance is important. Given a choice, if you're going to be in balance in one direction, you probably want to be in balance to where the posterior side of your body, whether it's your lower body or your upper, is a little stronger and a little more developed than the interior side, the front. You're less likely to get injured that way. Any muscle imbalance can impose the chance of injury, but it seems to be very, very dramatically reduced. In other words, don't neglect your posterior chain. That means your glutes, your hamstrings, your lower back. Don't neglect, neglect your rear delts. Don't neglect anything in your upper back. Don't neglect anything in your middle back. Your whole back is important for maintaining health, maintaining health of your spine, which is something that's going to be really important up into your old age. Even Jack Lane said that. He was probably, you know, he said some things a lot of us thought were funny today, but he probably outlived every fitness enthusiast that we know. Made it up into his 90s and swam the English Channel on his 92nd birthday. Swam the English Channel on his 92nd birthday. The guy was fit and virile up into his 90s until he died of pneumonia. And that wasn't from swimming the English Channel, by the way. It was years later. But uh, he even attributed the deadlift to a big portion of his longevity. Do you know why? He felt like it maintained bone density and the muscles in his back. And having a strong back kept him from deteriorating. And he felt like it slowed his aging. The posterior side of your body is the most important. Don't ever forget that. Don't neglect it. And don't neglect your core. Do everything that you can to make your core stronger. Don't worry about little things like it might add a half inch of muscle to my waistline. You want to be strong and fit? 
You want to have a strong back that doesn't get hurt or slow you down in life, and you need to worry about that more than some silly little thing like if I do too much core work or too many heavy deadlifts or whatever, I might put a half an inch on my waistline because I get too well developed. Don't be silly, guys. No one gives a shit about the fact that you gave a half inch around your waistline. Nobody cares. No one's going to even notice. Don't worry about it. Again, put your fitness and your health and your long-term gains and strength and fitness of your body ahead of your ego. If you do that, you're going to be a lot happier for it in the long term. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and uh, I will talk to you guys next time.